Whenever you're ready, go okay. ahead. Hi, I'm Steve Morse. I worked at Aero Development from uh, 1979 to 1981 as a journeyman machinist. I was an uh, art major at San Jose State, uh, graduated January of 75. Um, while I was there, I met Mark Lipton, who was uh, eventually working at Frontier Village. Um, <clears throat> while I was at San Jose State, I wor worked uh, at the San Jose Museum of Art. My title was guard, but I did all kinds of stuff, painting the walls and building crates and hanging paintings, uh, driving truckloads of sculpture across the country. It was great fun, real variety of stuff. Um, but it was six days a week, and <clears throat> after three and a half years, it was getting kind of old. Um, so I gave notice and no idea what I was going to do. Uh, walking to lunch one day, bumped into Mark Lipton from Frontier Village, and we just got to chatting, and he said, hey, you know, we're looking for somebody who does what you do. Um, why don't you come on down and talk to Lori Hollings, our you know, park designer. Said, okay. So I went down there and met with Lori. We had a nice conversation, and uh, some days later, he dropped by the museum and said, you got the job. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> so um, I went down there, and my first job was to rebuild uh, the Lost Dutchman's Mine. And I rebuilt all the mechanical figures, new sets, I re rebuilt them. Um, the problem they had was that with their pay one price policy, people would get on the ride and after they've ridden it two or three times, they get kind of bored. So they'd jump out of the cars and kick things or slap things and it would eventually get pretty trash. So it needed a lot of work. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, all new sets and new animated figures um, and it was a lot of learn by doing. Um, I had learned just working with my dad on stuff, um, how things work, but I'd never put together pneumatic cylinders or, but it was all really pretty simple and <clears throat> um, intuitive. Then at some point Lori Hollings was offered a job at Arrow a project to build a ride on the scale of the Pirates of the Caribbean but it was going to be a swamp theme called it the Great Dismal Swamp and he wanted me to come work with him I said yeah I'll do that <laughs> so um, went up to Arrow um, joined the Union and for my first weeks anyway I was what's called a helper and you really can't do much as a helper. I could cut wood and nail things together um, for this ride. So the, the first thing, backtrack a little, we were gonna build two parts or two styles of this ride. It was a, a purely on spec and they wanted um, the inexpensive relatively version and the like Disney level version. So for the, <clears throat> the, the Econo ride, it was flat panels painted to look 3D, and we had them laid in layers, uh, trees just cut out 2D. Um, and it was a, a great like master-apprentice kind of relationship. I, as the apprentice, I built the, the trees, and I did the underpainting, the, the trunks and the branches and the basic foliage. And then Lori came along later and did the final leaves and the flowers and the berries and all that. And then we built <clears throat> the not so econo version, which was real 3D. Um, built up framework, um, covered it with chicken wire, burlap, latex. Uh, and for the foliage, we had <clears throat> eucalyptus branches, which I'm pretty sure came from Frontier Village. And we hung those outdoors and the guys from the fiberglass shop came by with their chopper gun and um, put chopped fiberglass strands and it looked like Spanish moss. And we'd get up there and, you know, form it and um, let it set <clears throat> and then went back and painted it. And it looked pretty darn real, uh, not like fiberglass. And when we hung these things up, so you walk into the set that we had built, it was a chain link fence around the sump that they had for the uh, flume rides. 
like a huge swimming pool. And chain link fence with like 50% screening over it and on the roof. So you walk in and it's like being deep in a, the swamp, dark. Um, anyway, the, the Econo ones look pretty good. And then the, the real, the more real ones, the trees. Um, and then there was a shack, um, a few steps coming down, yeah, window, ratty looking roof with some shingles, uh, a little dock and a boat. And one of the gimmicks was going to be everybody in the boat has a laser pistol and you shoot at the targets and they do something. Uh, the skull spits its teeth out. There was another one, the figure jumps, and I, I don't remember what else. Talk a little bit about um, Laurie himself and what it was like working working directly with this guy. Oh, boy. Um, he was a master. Um He'd whip out little sketches and say, okay, yeah, you know, build this. And it was so simple and just a few lines and you'd get the message across. I want it. I need a, a shack that looks like this. And I want a little dock that looks like this and real quick. And he was real good about telling me to, you know, loosen up. This is, um, but I, I was making everything a little too nice. Um, in a sense, people are only going to, when they, when they go past this, they're only looking at it for 30 seconds. And so, not only that, it, it was, it didn't need to be this pretty. It was just, um, it's supposed to be a rundown shack in a swamp. It's not supposed to be a nice turn of the century, whatever. So, um, <clears throat> and I learned a lot of techniques about when I was at Frontier Village with him, I had mixed plaster before, but I didn't know the real easy way to mix it. Um, you know, big pan, you just take it and you sp just sprinkle it in, and when you when it fills up, you're done. And then you you do your thing, and in 20 minutes it hardens, and that's it. You, know, you don't stir it up. And, um, I built a skull that spit its teeth out, and after I left Arrow, I did a project for Lori, he was working on a uh, an amusement park in Las Vegas, and he needed four guys, you know, two guys playing poker at a table with chairs. So I built a table and chairs, just um, particle board, quick and dirty chairs, <clears throat> particle board, and plywood and chicken wire and fiberglass arms and he had hands left over from something and we used those I think yeah anyway heads and I dressed these guys up and they were holding their cards playing poker and it this was going to be mounted upside down in I don't know where or what part of an, an attraction it was but anyway some park in Las Vegas um, so that was just a little side job I did. <clears throat> that was fun. I just did it out in my backyard, and uh, that, was, that was fun. So we we already talked about the the bog ride, and so let's let's jump now into the raft ride and and working with Carl. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Carl had this <clears throat> this idea for building a, a whitewater raft, simulated whitewater raft ride. And it was, we we're going to build a model, I think, one tenth scale. And he designed fiberglass troughs that were about a foot wide, uh, six or eight inches deep, and different lengths, uh, curved right and left, different radius. Um, and we set these up <clears throat> on adjustable stands so we could adjust the, the angle that the water was going to flow. And so I taught myself how to use a transit to set all these things up and get the heights right and the angles right and all that. And um, so, okay, now get it set up this way. And okay, with this one, I need some amount of rocks to get the turbulence we need. And then here I need a, a little, just a little dam. And I don't remember all the other variations, but um, <clears throat> big water pump and a flow controller so and depending on the the volume of water that was going down and the angle you could adjust exactly the effect 
that you wanted. You get more or less rapids. Uh, sometimes you could get the water to flow really smooth and flat and really fast. And if you change one end of it, a 64th of an inch, you got a completely different flow pattern. It was just, it was amazing to me. He had all these calculations to, to figure out how to do this, but um, he said, okay, yeah, okay. I like this, but now try raising this a quarter of an inch and so get, out, get out the transit. We've got the flows kind of worked out. And then uh, I had to build a model of the raft. Uh, styrofoam, and I don't remember what I coated it with. It was urethane foam. Anyway, some sort of rubbery coating painted on. Um, a couple of Ken and Barbie dolls. I think a total of four or six, I don't remember now. Um, <clears throat> and put those in the raft and it went on down and we filmed it. Got a couple of people to come by and look at that. <clears throat> um, I think that was towards the end before I got laid off. I I don't think that it went any further than the model or while I was there. But it was great working with Carl. The guy was a genius. We'd uh, you know, do something and the water changed a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go make a quick calculation. I'll be right back. <laughs> so he'd, he'd go make some calculations and come back. He's okay, raise this or lower this or change the water flow. Um, and anyway, fascinating guy to work with. Um, <clears throat> and a great machinist. Uh, his hobby, I found out, was building live steam locomotives. And he was working on one, and I don't remember exactly how big it was, but I think it was at least a one-foot gauge big, or maybe more. But I was told that instead of going to the store and buying 440 screws, he would make his own. Tiny little screws. Every time he needed a screw, just go to the lathe, make a screw. Um, you know, I never saw this locomotive, but I heard that it was quite a piece of work. Um, Anyway, I was working on some little production project, 20 pieces of something that we needed. Uh, the prototype shop got little jobs like that they didn't want to type the machine shop for. So I was you know, making these little parts and Carl walked by and he said, you know, you could probably speed up the feed on that a little bit. Now, you're the machinist, but you could probably speed that up a little. I was like, I mean, okay, let me dial it up a little bit. And Cut right along and oh yeah <laughs> he knew what he was talking about so that's one of the things i learned there was a um, a real feel for machining stuff i I'd, I'd grown up and we had a mill and a not a mill but uh we had a wood lathe and a metal lathe and a drill press and a table saw bands all, all that kind of stuff in my basement when i was growing up so i'd been working around this stuff um but not really as a machinist i just sort of I never really machined parts. I'd, I'd play around on a machine, but I never really made parts. But the experience I got at Arrow with <clears throat> doing this day in and day out, it was uh, a real seat of the pants learning experience. It's, it's amazing what your eye can do. Uh, I had a job turning something on the lathe. And I, I don't remember, it was many parts. And after you've done a hundred of something, you can just look at it and say, oh, that, that's off by about five thousandths. And you measure it, yeah. And you take another five thousandths off. And it, um, but it takes a lot of, like, it takes a lot of practice <laughs> to get there. But it was a great experience. Okay, as part of the, a part of the flying turns, we had this, uh, what we called the nut bowl, sitting in the, pretty much the middle of the main floor. Um, and inside here um, was a big stand with a motor and gears and all. Went up an arm that went out to a simulated uh, flying turns car with its four wheels and casters and all. And we were testing different kinds of tires and different ways of filling them to, for uh, life testing. Uh, you, know, you don't, don't want to blow out while one of these things is going down the ride. So this thing was running all the time, and it was loud. If you can imagine this big hollow fiberglass bowl, I mean, this is full size of the rock. I don't remember how wide the thing was, but it was big. Um, anyway, 
all day and it was almost deafening. You had to shout to be heard if you were talking to somebody. Um, anyway, we tried different kinds of tires and different ways to fill them. Some were foam filled. I think that ended up being the, the most reliable because you can't have a blowout. Uh, downside is you can only use it once. <laughs> but that was, uh, yeah, quite an experience. I was so glad when they finally shut it down because every day having this thing off. Yeah. Okay, um, <clears throat> the suspended coaster had, the prototype had been built. Um, we had a model that worked and then the, the first prototype of the real thing was up and running and I had a chance to ride that a few times. Great feeling, just, it was like flying. And I'd go down and swoop around the corners. Um, it was a great ride. And then they wanted to add a corkscrew feature to it, <clears throat> which we did. We got the, of course, first made the model and made the model work. And then they went and built the, the real deal. The car came down and it swings, I think, to the right and then to the left to get it going, to give it some inertia to, to go around the outside. You're swinging around the outside of the track. Um, which is pretty cool because you're out there in space. I mean, I never rode it, but that's that was the idea. You're out there. You're not sitting on a track. You're floating below it. And that was the uh, the nice thing. It was so smooth because you're not sitting on the track. You're separated. So you didn't feel all the normal bumps and rattling that you do often on a coaster. It was really smooth. Anyway, so <clears throat> sent the car down. Uh, on the prototype and it went down and it did the couple of corkscrews and it worked. And then they put an accelerometer in it to see what kind of stress they're going to put the riders on. And it was eight G's, which was a little too much, probably cause a blackout. And uh, <clears throat> so we, we knew it worked. And now let's see if we can do this without killing people. <laughs> At some point, they changed the chassis, made it much heavier, probably too heavy, um, looking back on it. But they also added, um, and I don't remember if this was to the original or to the heavier version, but added dampers like shock absorbers. So it, instead of this thing whipping around, it would slowly go around. And they, I don't remember what they got it, what the G-forces got down to, but at least it wasn't lethal. So that would have been a cool ride if if it ever happened.